Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting, the City of Casa Grande. It is 7 o'clock, and uh, first order of business is the uh, invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance, so please remain standing after our Pledge of Allegiance. We have Pastor Elgin tonight. Thank you, Pastor, for coming. Right, the new year. Eastern. <laughs> Would have been appropriate. I think the pandemic was the main main thing that just disrupted our lives. Yeah. One thing I was going to ask you, can we say a prayer, include Matt Herman uh, in our prayer tonight? He's remote. He's, yeah. He's remote. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. And Happy New Year. And thank you, Bob. Glory, let the roll call show that everyone is present. Uh, Matt is present via telephone. So noted. Mayor, I move as far regarding the minutes that we uh, move, the, uh, move for approval of City Council regular meeting minutes from December 21st, 2020. And except for the record, the Casa Grande Police Personnel Retirement Board from September 7th, as they're both presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, minutes are approved. Claims against the city, item D1. Mayor McFarland, I move approval of the claims dated December 16th through the 29th as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded for the claims of December 16th through December 29th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, claims are approved. The meeting agenda approval, I do want to make a note that uh, on our first published agenda there was um, a call to the public that has been removed and was um, actually uh, sent out today. Uh, any other changes? We may want to move. We are going to have an executive session, right, Larry? Yes, sir. So I think um, we already have the reports at the end, so it's good to go. Anybody else have any changes? Or do you want to move, I should, we want to move the reports before the executive session. Can we do that? Okay, so item N, we will put uh, just following the item K on our agenda. Anybody else have anything? Okay, I'll take, make a, take a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. So we don't have any special presentations, so we'll move right into consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine matters and will be enacted by one motion and one roll call vote of the council. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or member of the public so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its nor normal sequence of the agenda. Does anybody have anything that you want to remove? I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Okay, there's a motion. Can I get a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I please get a roll call vote on the consent agenda items? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right, next item are our Item I, uh, award of contracts. The first one is I-1, consider ordinance number 3248. Yes, sir. Do I need to start over? <laughs> All right. Um, pursuant to the uh, FAA guidelines, in order to provide uh, design and support services to the airport uh, grant projects, we did uh, request uh, uh, qualifications from firms to provide these services to the airport. We had five submittals. And then per the uh, FAA guidelines, we picked two firms to use throughout the uh, five-year period. Uh, for these projects and then we alternate between the two firms uh, depending on what uh, uh, grant projects are approved. Um, there's no guarantee we'll uh, uh, enter into a task order for these projects based on these contracts. It's only in case a grant is approved and the process would be we would start those discussions based on these contracts with the firms to come up with a scope and fee for the project uh, for that grant. And then as we come back to council to accept those grants, you would have an opportunity to see the scope and fee, 
that we develop for each of these projects uh, while you have the opportunity to approve that grant. So that's your opportunity to look at this and, and determine whether we move forward with the projects or not. So these contracts need to be in place in order to be eligible for the grants. Otherwise, we have no way of meeting the, uh, the timelines that are established by uh, ADOT and the FAA throughout this process. Uh, the physical impacts of these projects, uh, typically grants are funded anywhere from 80% to 100%. So the city would be uh, on the hook for the, uh, that 20% to 5%, uh, whatever that is, uh, depending on the different grants, and they vary um, as we look at those. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Powell? I, I just, I, I know we have two different groups there, and one does design service and the other engineering. And, uh, and I do like the way it starts off, award of contract for F, uh, fiscal year 21 through 26, airport design services dependent on receipt of grant funding, mm -hmm. which I think is, is, is very good. And you need two of them because they do enough different, I assume, that to be complete with what we need to do at the airport, it would take both of them to help us. That's correct. Um, okay. they, they never want one sole contractor to do all the projects, so they typically say pick two and then alternate between those. And at any point during this process, we can go back out and do another qualifications-based solicitation. If we're unhappy with any of the firms, we can start this process over. So we have it if we want it through 2026, but there's no requirement that we only use these firms moving forward. So if we ever become displeased with a firm or or they're just not performing, we do have a, the ability to get out. Thanks, Kevin, sounds good. Anyone else have any questions for Kevin? Okay, seeing none, then I'll call for ordinance number, please, Gloria. Ordinance number 3248, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, approving the terms and conditions of agreements with C and S Engineering, Inc. and Armstrong Consultants, Inc. for the purpose of providing airport design professional services for fiscal year 2021 through 2026 and authorizing execution by the city manager of the two agreements. Mayor McFarland, I would move for the approval of uh, Ordinance 324A as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved moot and seconded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the yours, Kevin. It's I-2, consider ordinance number 3249. Yeah, so staff is recommending that the Marin City Council award a contract for airport planning services to Kaufman and Associates and Armstrong Consultants to provide planning, environmental, and grant administration services uh, dependent on that grant funding and on an as-needed basis. Again, same, same process. We had five submittals, and we picked the uh, top two uh, qualified firms uh, through that process. And again, these, these projects are funded anywhere from 80% to 100%, uh, but we have to have these contracts in place uh, prior to us applying for these grants. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Most all these grants would be FAA, right? Uh, they these can be FAA ADOT. or ADOT, ADOT. Okay. Um, or a combination of both. Okay. These are ADOT, I think. Uh, I think they're actually both. Well, they yeah, they it, it's okay. ADOT's they can, they could be FAA funded FAA. projects, but it's all administrated through ADOT. Right. So the mayor's correct. I, Anybody else have any questions? Okay, thank you, Kevin. Seeing no questions, then I'll call for an ordinance number, please, Gloria. Ordinance number 3249, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona approving the terms and conditions of agreements with Kaufman Associates, Inc. and Armstrong Consultants, Inc. 
for the purpose of providing airport planning professional services for fiscal years 2021 through 2026 and authorizing execution by the city manager of the two agreements. Matt, this is yours. <laughs> Mayor McFarland, I move approval of uh, ordinance. I'm trying to find the number. 3249. 3249 as presented. Thank you. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right, next item is our boards and commissions. We have a couple new appointments that we need the council to consider. Uh, the first is J1, consider approving the appointment of Lisa Swanson and Ralph Varela to the Arts and Humanities Commission with terms to expire on September 30th. Uh, first, I just want to publicly thank them for volunteering. Um, Lisa and Ralph. Ralph obviously has been a past council member and um, very active in our community as, as, as well as Lisa as well. So we just want to thank them both for their service. Does anybody have any questions about this? Seeing that, I'll entertain a motion to approve these two as item J1. Mayor McFarland, I move approving the appointment of Lisa Swanson and Ralph Varela to the Arts and Humanities Commission. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations to Lisa and Ralph, and thank you again both for your service. Next item is J2. Consider approving the appointment of Dario Nora to the police, Nario, excuse me, to the uh, police advisory board with the term to expire February 20, 2022, and approve a waiver for the residency requirement rule. Mayor McFarland, I move approving the appointment of Dario Nora to the Police Advisory Board. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, aye. Any, any disapprovals? Okay. <laughs> Um, again, thank you, Dario, for your service and for volunteering. It is greatly appreciated from your community. The last item on this uh, under the boards and commissions is J3. Consider approving the appointment of Jack Eisenhower to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board with the terms to expire on February 1st, 2023, um, and an approval, a waiver for the residency requirement rule also. Mayor, I just wanted to make a comment. I, I saw a couple of the appointments are new people and we're doing the waiver. And I was just happy to see that, you know, we're getting new people. And, and people Lucid that, Motors. yeah, I mean, it, it's nice to get new people. I actually <coughs> met the gentleman, Dario, at the dog park and he had just moved here from LA and was really excited to get involved in the community. So I'm really happy that he followed up. And I actually think I met um, Jack also. So. <laughs> Um, so I'm just happy to see people yeah, he's that want to get engaged. He's Lucid's uh, <coughs> yeah, international global. supply. Mm -hmm. international I think I supply. met him at the dog park yeah, too. Yeah. Oh. I'm telling you, a lot of things <laughs> happen at the dog park. People. So that's the place to be. <laughs> and Larry, I thought they were both residents, but they but they live out off of Mac, uh, McCartney or something. And it is that they both are residents, but they've not lived in the community for the period of time uh, okay, necessary. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because I thought they bought homes here in they town. Do. So yes, they, okay, they do. Okay. Yeah, they both do. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, anyways, I'm just, it's, it's I'm just happy to it, see the, the the appointment and and the waiver and. Yeah, they are both both yeah. new yeah. residents. So. Yeah. Okay. So, great, uh, Mayor. I move <laughs> approving the appointment of Jack Eisenhower to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, aye. Oppo aye. Any opposed? Great. Okay, again, thank you, Jack, for your service and for volunteering, and, and welcome to Casa Grande. The next item is item K, ordinance resolutions and other matters. Uh, item K1 is considering a resolution number 5273, planning and development. Mr. Tice.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. So tonight is the end of a 18 month process um, in the development of a new general plan for, for Casa Grande. Uh, process that involved a significant amount of public and stakeholder process that helped inform and shape the final plan that's uh, before you this evening. That's the slide on the screen kind of outlines what the process we've followed over the last 18 months um, with the last, of course, of being a public hearing before council on December 21st. The new plan really uh, tried to address some emerging community issues that we heard through that process, uh, specifically um, making sure that we linked our limited water resources to our growth and development scenarios. A desire to promote infill of vacant land that could be easily and efficiently provided with municipal services. The need to expand housing choices to accommodate all income levels and demographics. The desire to bring new activity and development into our downtown area. And lastly, to drive growth through the creation of new quality jobs um, through commercial and industrial development. I think the, uh, the new plan does a really good job of addressing and developing strategies to, for all of those emerging issues. This is the uh, land use plan, and I do want to make council aware of one change that occurred uh, prior, um, after your last meeting, your public hearing, um, regarding 100 acres that were changed from commerce and business to community corridor. The site is 100 acres on the west side <coughs> of Pinal, north of O'Neill, south of Quartzen. You can see it outlined on the screen. The reason for the change was that, one, we realized that uh, that site, I'll back up again, that site under the existing general plan is in our community corridor um, land use category. So it's community corridor today. Uh, we had proposed to put it into commerce and business, as you can see here, but uh, we changed it back to community corridor to align, one, with the current general plan, and two, uh, we have a development proposal that's being formulated in, in that area that works in the community corridor land use category, but would not work as well in the commerce and business. So it's, it's, in, the commerce and it's in the community corridor similar to the category that it exists in today. So I just want to make you aware of that. Um, it is shown, as you see on the screen, in the draft, the final draft of the plan, which um, I did attach as a PDF to the RCA. I don't know if you were able to open it. I hope so. Uh, but all the edits uh, are, that have been made by um, the final edits are reflected in the version that was provided to council and as well as this change. We do have to just, uh, to, I want to note, have to change some, a little bit of text to show the 100 acres change um, reduction in commerce and business and 100 acre increase in the commerce, the community corridor category. So we will make that small technical change and then we will be doing a final printing of the plan, um, assuming, uh, if council approves it this evening, we'll do a final printing. We'll make it available in the clerk's office, available in the library. It's already available on the city website. Uh, and then we'll start engaging in the uh, public information process to inform the citizens of what the plan entails in preparation for the vote in uh, May 18th. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that uh, you might have. Mr. Powell? Not a question, just, just a comment. <clears throat> the, uh, the downtown, I think we have to do things to make the, some of these things come around like we want them to. And, and I think we need to market some way, getting some people, some vendors and stuff in the downtown area. You're providing the apartments and those type of things along the way. And, and I think it, would, it needs that to, to really make it healthy. 
And the other thing I would say is basically when it comes to water, the city should evaluate a collaboration with appropriate public or private entities. The federal government is a public entity. Uh, additional water supplies to the Pipinal AMA, which can be used to support desired growth and development. I think we really need to look into that. But I have no, I mean, I, I stand behind. I think you did a great job, as I said last time. I just, uh, to make these things happen, sometimes we just uh, want to work hard, so. Maybe to, uh Councilman Powell's point is that, you know, one of the next steps that we'll be um, working on as staff is an implementation strategy for the plan to prioritize some of the action steps and assigning responsibility for those, you know, staff or outside organizations that might take the lead in implementing those. So we are going to be working on an implementation strategy to accompany the plan uh, probably between now and the public vote. Yeah, and we're we're going to be working on a on a rollout plan uh, here in January. We'll be doing some videos and some other things that will help support it, as well as the um, water uh, conservation plan. You know, when our goal really is a 15% reduction in household water I use. Saw that. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, that's a big goal, and I think that will save us a lot of water as well. So. It's, well, imp it's important, Mr. Fowler. Totally, totally and then agree if we could it. get a new source also mm -hmm. of water, mm -hmm. it'd mm -hmm. be really, really good. Yep, totally agree. And thank, thank you, Paul, your staff, and and you, and all the time, and and it really for all the citizen input as well, and uh, the technical team and the citizen team uh, really put a lot of time and effort into this, and it, it is greatly appreciated. The consultant also, so please uh, tell her thank you, thank you, thank you, um, and then. You know, really to the to the community for the input on this. I think it's been a community-wide effort. Very inclusive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know Mr. Powell was part of our our group and myself, and so we we uh, really had good input from a lot of people. So. As well as Councilman Lavender. That's true. Mm -hmm. He was he was on our committee as well. He wasn't a councilman at the time. No, though, he so. wasn't. <laughs> but he was there. <laughs> Thank you. It's been, really been a collaborative effort, and uh, I think it's a plan we can all be proud of. Yes. Thank you. Well, Thank one you. More Thank thing you, Paul. I would say, Mayor, is I don't know that anybody in Arizona is going to have a better general plan than we have right here. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I would agree with you. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. Anybody else have any other comments? Did you get your raise figured in, Paul? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm working on my bonus. All right. <laughs> All right, seeing none, then I'll, uh, I'll call for resolution number, please, Gloria. Resolution number 5273, a resolution of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, concerning the proposed general plan of the city, finding and determining certain facts, adopting the proposed general plan of the city, ordering the submittal of the proposed general plan by the call of election of the city for ratification, ordering availability of the general plan for public inspection and providing for an effective date. Mayor McFarland, I move approval of resolution number 5273 as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. Excellent. And then K2, consider authorizing call for election for the city 2030 general plan. Gloria? Yes. Mr. Mayor, members of the city council staff would um, recommend that the mayor and council authorize the call for the election for the city's 2030 general plan and authorize that this election be held by an all-male, M-A-I-L, ballot election. <laughs> the election is scheduled for May 18th, 2021. This um, election, um, we're recommending that it be held by an all-male ballot election. One is that 61% of our uh, registered voters in the city of Casa Grande are registered to receive their ballot by mail. We don't think that if you hold an, a poll voting um, election that it would increase um, the voter turnout significantly 
And then, of course, there is the cost of the election. To hold an all-mail ballot election, it is estimated that the county would charge us $77,126. If we do a regular election, which they have told me it's 19 polling places, it is possible that we could consolidate those polling places, but that would still have to be determined by Pinal County Elections Department. That election would cost us $85,349. Of note for this election, it will include um, a publicity pamphlet. Uh, we have received quotes from two uh, local vendors, so we will be able to use a local vendor uh, to print our publicity pamphlet. Uh, so as soon as we get that information from our planning department, we'll be ready to submit that information for translation and then over to our printer. So, Gloria, so the other 40% that aren't, aren't signed up, <coughs> will they still get a ballot? Yes, in an okay. all-mail uh, ballot, yes. every registered yeah. voter okay. um, will receive a ballot. Right. Yes. Just, just want to make that. And clear. then there will be a replacement um, center designated with our county recorder office here in Casa Grande. So if your dog happens to eat your ballot, you can go in there and you can get a replacement ballot. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> great. Are there any other questions, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Powell? Oh, <clears throat> yeah, Bob. Have we done an all-mail-in ballot election before? In my prior um, mm -hmm. uh, term here with the city, <coughs> uh, we did a, a all mail ballot election. Was that and a I don't home rule or something? It was a oh, okay. yeah. Uh, Good memory. Okay, yeah. and that went smoothly. No issues that we. Not that I'm aware of. We've okay. not had any issues. And I think the most important is going out there really and and um, letting the public know that we are going to do an all mail it all mail ballot election, and we'll do that um, through advertisement in our local newspaper, we'll put it on our website, um, we'll just try to promote it as much as we can. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Lisa? And I think that's my point, <clears throat> is I wanted to make sure that we are promoting it, and then is there going to be an opportunity for people to register to vote? So is it going to be like a regular election <coughs> where so many days before that you is can correct. register? Okay. All the, all the deadlines apply to Perfect. a special election. So and we'll again, we, we do advertise, you know, <coughs> this is uh, the last day for you to register to vote. Perfect. We put it on our website. So hopefully. Because there may be new voters who have turned 18 since right. the mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. full right. election. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good okay. point. Donna? Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to make a point that I'm I'm really encouraged that we're looking at an all male M A I L um, <laughs> election, and for several reasons. One, I think it's cost effective, but also where we're at right now may sounds like a long time away, but in actuality, it's not. And so I think that it kind of ensures that we can still have that participation and be safe to yeah. the community. Yeah. I'd also like to note that once the city calls for an uh, all mail ballot. If there's, you know, school type of election for any reason, then they would have to join in the um, mail ballot. But we have clarified with the school districts, and they don't have anything planned uh, for the May election. Okay, but something could get tacked on. It. <coughs> it is possible, but once we call for the all mail ballot, then they would have to also okay. put it on an all mail ballot. We wouldn't have an all mail ballot and then a polling place. Uh, it would be um, an all-mail ballot okay. election. Yeah, Lisa. One, another question. Um, I know we've had discussion about the possibility of changing some things on our charter. Is this something we couldn't go in on this for a charter election, right? I mean, we're going to have to do it totally separate, and is that going to be its own election later down the road? Right. I think, um, Councilmember Fitzgibbons, it's it's a matter of timing at this point okay. because you're you're really calling the election now, and and the deadlines are got um, it. What 120 days mm -hmm. to you know to 60 days out. So, uh, mm -hmm. if amending the charter is something we want to do, we're certainly going to look into what that process would be. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And then schedule that separately, though, likely from from this one. Simply the time to, to try to turn that and get it included right. on this um, is probably too aggressive. Yeah, it's probably it'd probably be 2022. Okay. I would bet. But this is about what the cost is. Gives us an idea of what an all male. Okay. M A I L. <laughs> Does anyone Thank else you. have any other questions, <laughs> Mr. Powell? Just a comment. I think we can have worry about our voting count a lot more than. <laughs> The rest of the nation is right now with the with the mail in, and and like you said, I think the biggest thing 
Lori, as, as everybody knows about it, and if they want to vote, they have the opportunity. And yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. No more questions or comments, then I will call for a, or it's a motion. A vote for the uh, election. I need a motion to consider authorizing the call for the election of the city's 2030 general plan to be held on May 18th Mayor Mc and authorize Mayor McFarland. an all mail in ballot election. Yes, Matt. Matt's got it here. So moved. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Can I, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Did I hear an aye, Matt? Aye. Aye from me. All right, great. So it's been approved, Gloria. You can move forward. Thank you. All right. The next item is our reports. Actually, uh, is next. So we'll, because then we're going to go into executive session after the reports. So I'll start to my right. Bob, you want to start? Uh, no report. I've, I've been kind of uh, homebound for uh, the last <laughs> month or so. But anyway, thank you to the council uh, for approving my absence uh, <laughs> at the last meeting. Thank you. Mr. Powell? I do have some information to share. This, this is something that, uh, you know, we know that 2020 was a pretty darn tough year. This goes back to some of the statistics from the year 1920, which was 100 years ago. The average life expectancy for men was 47 years. Fuel for cars was sold in drugstores only. Only 14% of homes had a bathtub. Only 8% of the homes had a telephone. Maximum speed limit in most cities was 10 miles an hour. Tallest structure in the world was the Eiffel Tower. The average U.S. wage in 1920 was 22 cents an hour. The average U.S. worker made $200 to $400 a year. A competent accountant could expect to make about 2000 a year and a dentist 2500 a year. The, uh, a veterinarian, I guess, and it depends if he's doing racehorses or dogs, uh, from 1500 to 4000 a year. 95% of the births took place at home. 90% of the doctors had no college experience whatsoever. They had medical schools that were available, which the government condemned that they would go to and, and uh, learn how to do. Sugar was four cents a pound. Dozen eggs was 14 cents. 20% of adults couldn't read or write. And 230 murders in the USA. It's a little different than today, huh? That's my report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Powell. <coughs> Lisa? And I don't have anything like that, but all I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it is interesting, and you know, of course, we're all looking forward to 2021 and hoping that it's a it's a good year ahead of us. But I just wanted to thank. I mean, you know, the last two weeks have been the holidays, and of course, it's you know busy and crazy times out there for people, and especially with the stress of of COVID, and people are still losing jobs, people are still struggling, um, you know. But I did want to. Just, just thank our healthcare providers. I mean, we, um, you know, I've been hearing such great things about the um, um, the vaccine in the county. Of course, you hear some things that are going on, but then there's, you know, they're they're doing their best, and this is all new to us. You know, trying to get this vaccine out there, um, but you know, it's nice to see how you know they're doing it in our county versus some of the other counties. Um, definitely not perfect, but you know, we all just have to be patient and and pray and hope that we can you know, all get vaccinated and move on with their lives. But I, I did want to thank everyone because it is it has been crazy. And I know Larry even getting the information and trying to get it out. And it's just, you know, constantly changing. So um, I just wish everyone a happy and safe new year. And hopefully we can get get through this here soon. So that's it. Donna? Um, just a couple quick things. Um, kudos to the fire and police um, for New Year's Eve. Um, it was a lot different this year with all of the agencies kind of staying within their own boundaries, but um, they were still out there and the roadways were busy early. And um, so they were out working on our behalf. 
Just to, to echo what Lisa said about the vaccine and especially um, to our uh, health department and, and to some of our local um, facilities that have offered the vaccine, I will tell you that I, was, I proudly was in line early the day that I was told that I qualified for it and I was amazed at how organized they were and how ready they were for this. And I know that right now it is full. Um, the, what I heard today was that there are no available appointments until the 11th um, because everybody is going after them. So I, I appreciate those people that have chosen to do that. Um, and then I know that I did believe Mr. Lavender is gonna mention about the fireworks, so I will hold off on that. So <laughs> that's my report. Jeff? Well, I wanna congratulate uh, Casa Grande's own Jesus Ramos, who uh, yes. is 14 and 0 now as a professional fighter. And he won a nationally televised fight on December 26, representing our community. I also want to give a shout out to the Casa Grande Alliance. A couple of years ago, I thought this organization was going to go under. Donna mm -hmm. kept it afloat till we got a new executive director, Bob Shogren. And Bob has done a phenomenal job bringing this organization back, changing the focus from really slogans to getting kids involved in different things. And his staff is doing wonderful things. And the Casa Grande Alliance is a real... Uh, partner with the school district and providing a place for these kids to go. And the fourth and New Year's Eve was a concern about the level of fireworks, whether these are legal, illegal fireworks, I don't know. From what I understand the law, I think a lot of them are illegal. I know of two dogs that lost their lives on New Year's Eve that I'm aware of already um, that were just flat out scared. I know my wife and I, we took our dog to Gila Bend about 930 because we couldn't get her to calm down because uh, of the fireworks in our neighborhood. So we did not shop local. We had ice cream in Gila Bend and came back at 1230. But I think that's something we need to, I think it's getting out of hand. And I know Donna, I talked to her a little bit. She saw some of this and has heard some of the same concerns. All right, thank you, Bob, or Mr. Lavender. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, I don't have a whole lot, I just, you know, the holidays. Matt. We, oh, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. Forgot. That's okay. I'm just listening. Out of sight, out of mind, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's me. But uh sounds like everyone's on the right track. Thank you guys for your support tonight. And, uh, you know, just, just be careful out there and stay safe. That's all I can say. Reading the news today and everything, how all the infections are up. It's, it's everywhere. So just be careful. And... Um, the Youth Commission is trying to have a meeting this month, so we're working on that to stay safe and uh, how we can uh, navigate that. But anyway, thank you all very much. Matt, and how are you that's doing? All I have. I, I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, actually, yeah, doing good. Just trying to keep all the balls in the air, so doing all right. Thank you. All right, stay safe and don't infect anybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So um, <coughs> my typical report usually includes some stuff about COVID-19, so I, I won't disappoint. Um, today, uh, the state of Arizona uh, reported its 561,542nd case, cases of COVID. Um, it's a big number. In fact, in the last seven days, we have uh, reported in the state of Arizona 57,119 cases in the last seven days. That's almost 10% of all the cases since we've been reporting back in March. In the last 30 days, it's almost 36% of all the cases. So most of our cases have occurred in the last probably 60 days, if you put, if you put it all together. Um, we're sitting, the state's sitting at about 836 cases per 100,000. Our target is 100. Uh, the county is at 686 cases per 100,000, and our 85122 is at 805. So uh, the county is actually doing better than the state and better than our 85122. Uh, the county right now, in the last seven days has uh, had about 2,966 cases. Um, they're sitting, we've had a total of 261 deaths in the county. Uh, 85122, we are 
we've had eight, 483 cases in the last seven days. 483 cases in our zip code. In the last 30 days, we've had 1,788 cases. Uh, again, that's 38% of all the cases since we've been tracking in March, 278 days ago. Our infection rates for the state are 35%. Um, the county, these are, these are rolling averages, uh, seven day rolling averages. The county is at 29%. So we're a little better than the state and the county. And I don't have it for 85122 because uh, we don't track the number of tests. So um, Pinal County's tests continue uh, pretty heavily. Uh, we're, we've done uh, over 200,000 tests in Pinal County alone. Uh, the state has done over 3,330,000 tests since the start. So a lot of testing, uh, that's good. Uh, but also, if you, if you look at the infection rate, that's a function of the number of positive tests versus the number of, of, of um, tests that are done. So that's kind of the measure <coughs> that I really look at. And so our positivity rates are up, and they continue to climb. So I continue to ask people to please be safe, please mask up, uh, don't go out if you're sick. That's the biggest challenge I know. Um, but if you can stay home and isolate, that will prevent other people from getting the virus. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was testing. Testing is still available, at least for uh, the short term. We think that the county is running out of money in terms of paying for testing. Uh, I don't know when that will end, but I think it's coming. So I just want to forewarn everybody. And then as far as getting the, vi or getting the virus, as far as getting the vaccine, uh, there, are, there are 14 providers, uh, actually 15 or 16 now uh, with, with Safeway coming online uh, that are providing vaccines. But to Donna's point, I have heard uh, that they are all out of vaccines, at least for now, in the short term. There's still, I think, they're still administering some uh, vaccines. There's a couple that still have some left, but basically all the appointments are, are gone. And so uh, please continue to monitor the county's website. They will let you know when the vaccines are back and when they're available. So, um, and then we will also monitor it as a city and our staff, and we'll make sure that we put that on our website as well to make sure that everybody is, is informed. Uh, and I'll obviously uh, try and be as vocal about it as possible and make sure that uh, the community is aware uh, when the vaccine is again available so, so that people can uh, get in, in line, so to speak. Right Ray, now, we're 1A. Is it appropriate to ask a question? Well, let me finish and then I'll... That's fine. I didn't know. I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. I almost got just a couple more things. We're, we're 1A is um, medical workers, um, and then 1B is our uh, police and fire um, necessary, or, or what they call um, essential. essential workers, um, which again are our police and our fire, and then also teachers, they're in that 1B group. And if you wanna know what group you're in, you can go uh, to the state's website, ADHS, and you can also go to the county's website, and they have it all outlined, all the different groups. And, and who's who's in those groups? So, um, if if you if you're interested to find out, and the next group is the one C, which is really the largest group, and that's uh, that starts to get into the general public. Did you have a question, Mr. Powell? Is it appropriate? Is that all right? Or I think I'm just remind everyone that that the purpose of reports is not to have discussion. So if there's a question that you can potentially report on, that's okay. But once we start discussing or proposing legislation. We're outside <coughs> the purview of reports. Well, I can't nice really answer no. it without the question, but <laughs> without knowing the question. But. I will. Okay. He'll I'll ask, he'll ask it later. <laughs> okay. And then just to remind everybody, please stay safe out there. I do want to. I want to give out a couple of thank yous and accolades. I got a really nice uh, email from the CEO of Banner Casagrande about our fire, our police department, and he was just thanking. Uh, us and he was so grateful for the, his staff and physicians, uh, so grateful for the help of the uh, Cus Grand Police Department. 
So big shout out to the police department and, and to everybody who's been so helpful uh, with this whole pandemic and, and helping manage people and manage our situations that everybody's been faced with. So I just want to thank thank everybody for that. Thank our police department. Uh, thank you, Chief McCrory. And he's not here, so I can't harass him. But uh, also, the, we were awarded, AARP awarded the, um, the Pinal Alliance uh, for Economic Growth, which the city is a part of. They awarded us $75,000 for our uh, reading program. So that's an excellent, um, a super nice award and great for the program. And, and hopefully we're going to make a big impact on third grade readers and make sure that we, we get our reading scores up. So that's, that's, I think, where it starts. If we can get those kids reading and at a high proficiency level, that follows them all the way through college, so, or at least through high school. So that's all I have. I um, want to thank everybody. I want to say Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, let's, uh, let's hope for this uh, COVID thing to die down and um, we can kind of get back to some level of normalcy, whatever that might be. So Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Any other comments or questions? Staff, anything? Okay, stand adjourned.